Argo Santi is optimism in concrete. We define Argo Santi as a kind of an urban laboratory. The experiment in the laboratory is really a spatial experiment. How much space do we really need to take up in order to have rich and rewarding lives? Here are some stairs. Let's go all the way up. We intend to demonstrate how to create a walkable city. Not one that is dependent on fossil fuels, but one that is wonderful social space. People are here for a time, a few weeks, or maybe several years of their lives. Nearly 7,000 people since 1970 have come through this place, paying a tuition to be part of building all of the buildings that we see at Arcosonic. Okay, stand back for just a moment. About a third of our income f comes from the making and selling of ceramic and bronze wind bells. The work here is to figure out how to have a, a rich life without really being rich. I've lived at Arco Santi for almost nine years now. It's not what I envisioned for my life, but it's been the best thing for me. If people are instantly very open and very direct in their feelings. Before here, I was a senior project manager of an ad agency. The American dream of living in a mansion that's air conditioned where you have everything you need in the refrigerator is the best place for you to check Facebook. That's the opposite of what Arcosanti is about. This is the Slack system here. Uh, you can see we have all sorts of different uh, private and public channels. It's not trying to drop out of mainstream society. It's trying to say, we understand mainstream society intimately, and we're gonna go one or two steps ahead to see where this is going. We imagine that if cities were devised in the proper form, then something wonderful could happen. We're here in the central Arizona desert, not in spite of the place, but because of this place. Right now, we're kind of a base camp for arcology. Architecture and ecology as two parts of the same entity. We only use about one-fifth the amount of energy that um, most American developments use. Our architecture just works harder than your architecture. You'll see that the lights aren't turned on. We don't need to turn them on. We have the sun. The sun shines down on this concrete all day long, and in the evening, the concrete retains its warmth while the air gets cool. If we can devise some ways to populate the desert economically, ecologically, socially, it's going to have value for a third of humanity right away. When Paolo Soleri first started Argosanti in 1970. Paolo Soleri turned out to be among the most famous architects in the world. He was still working very hard up until the very last days of his life to continue to push this idea of the three-dimensional, compact, complex urban city. Since Paolo Soleri's death in 2013, we have had a vision for this place. So we have 17 sketchbooks and about 5,600 pages altogether. Here then is one of the first designs of Arco Sandi. And you see right here is little Arco Sandi that we have right now. This is original Soleri work. He used crayon and um, drew all this. Our work as the next generation of uh, Arcosantians is to revisit Soleri's early designs, see how they can become buildable and transferable to 
other places and peoples. After a while, one of two things happen. Either you go to sleep from the outside world and you just say, life's great, I'm gonna watch a sunset, have my mind blown, write poetry. But hopefully what it will say is, we have a responsibility to help many more groups of people. Right now, a little more than 50% of all human beings alive on the planet live in cities. In the next 30 years, that's likely to go up to 80%. We can put our minds together and try to solve the issue of our generation, how to live in cities.